my name's uh, Tristan Berry and I'm a local historian and we're sitting in the house I was brought up in basically. Uh, albeit this end of it is a chicken, used to be a chicken shed. When I was growing up here, my dad had built in a, um, a secret passageway into one of the rooms. So and there was like a sliding wall and up behind the sliding wall, there was a sort of spiral staircase, which led into a room, which at one point was my bedroom. And that was, that was really exciting. My dad, he was in a, a thing called the Cornish Buildings Group. And we used to have Cornish Buildings Group meetings and I would meet all these um, sort of historians and um, antiquarians and, and uh, architects and archaeologists. Yeah, I was kind of lucky and spent a lot of time in castles, every moment I could get in, in castles. And I, I still have a dream to build a castle up, up there one day, but uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> the books that I would read when I was a child were old, you know, history books. So I was just steeped in it from the, you know, from the first, well, slightly later in life, I, I got a job in the, in the Cornish Studies Library, which was a uh, kind of a dream job, really. There was amazing, beautiful things in there and I had access to it all. What I loved about, you know, doing people's family histories was seeing the look on people's faces most of the time. Yeah, that's the sort of thing that I, I really, really miss. It, it was, yeah, sort of exciting time. Like 19th century newspaper reports, that was like my kind of speciality, if you like. I, I really like that. You spend hours looking for specific things. It might be a death notice or, a, you know, something like that. But in this case, I found the report about two uh, Falmouth fishermen out in the bay there, and they saw a shark. I think we're talking maybe like a poor beagle or something like that, a, a very big shark, 12 to 14 foot, being fishermen, sort of not scared by it, but sort of um, wanted to just catch this thing. I guess it must have been the time when um, people had explosives hanging around. They decided to attach some of these explosives to a harpoon and in due course managed to spear this poor shark, which was uh, only innocently swimming around, probably, probably trying to catch fish or something. Unfortunately for the fishermen though, um, after they'd successfully harpooned it, what they didn't figure was that the shark would then swim underneath them and that was the point where it blew up and taking both of the fishermen with it. So that was the end of the, <laughs> the uh, explosive harpoon fishing uh, industry in, in Falmouth, the short-lived. Um, yeah. so, <laughs> I've got a soldier in my past. He was a, a, a dastardly character as well. Oh. He's the, the one member of my, my family that I'm, I'm still actually, if anybody out there uh, knows any, uh, anything about Captain Girling, he's one of the, the mysteries um, of my family history <laughs> going back. I love telling the stories and sometimes with my children I love I love telling stories. I miss them being young enough so that I could read them stories. Yeah, I need to I need to find someone to read stories to. That's a, that's a good point. I mean, I think that's why I love history. It's the story of everything that's happened, you know, from from you know the the very first words written down and and in a way I want I think of history as more than that, you know, archaeology and um yeah, yeah, I I'm really excited about it um, and I just want to know more and more and more. I love old Ealing comedies. I would recommend The Lady Killers if you've never ever seen it or Kind Hearts and Coronets. I feel a bit like angsty about it but I, yeah, I love Warhammer and yeah when I was a kid I would make um, all sorts of buildings for, for my figures and I occasionally paint them but I used to quite like the figures when they were because it in my day they were all made out of lead alloy so um, they were beautiful and and also smelled really lovely and also gave you brain damage so <laughs> teaching my my niece how to play chess recently and we decided to use uh, warhammer miniatures as the chess pieces so i was sort of playing the hobgoblin carnate and she was playing largely beast men with a few other weird characters Christmas shopping one day I came back with something um, for myself I'm not going to put it on because it's got a spider living inside um, I just really loved it and I've always wanted fairy bits on the side of a helmet this is my my fencing helmet I've got a, a, a dueling scar and um, let me think which side of mine yeah just just here 
uh, where a, a lightsaber went through <laughs> um, when we were sparring out, outside a pub one night. <laughs> During the lockdown I had a little mouse move in um, who I named Apodemus and he was the only mouse brave enough to come onto this table here. Um, and I, I did manage to capture him once and as I, uh, as I lifted the lid off the thing he jumped out of it and into a luckily empty teacup which was just <laughs> in my shower room I've got um, what I've been reassured by a, a more sciencey friend than myself is algae growing on my wall. I was going to remove it because I thought it was mould maybe <laughs> um, but if it's algae apparently it's really good for you and it, it, it actually improves the air quality so I'm leaving it I've got a half green shower room but it's it's um, apparently a really healthy shower room an incredibly large house spider over in the corner there that um, uh, she was called Shalob because she lived uh, in, in my Lord of the Rings calendar and that was uh, a, a, a great famous um, house spider. Only yesterday I discovered a slightly more disturbing one in that it was um, I think a false widow. I looked it up, it had a, a white stripe on its back and um, you must tell me during filming if uh, it does land on my head because it was just above me. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yeah. Um.